Do you have to get out of bed to go pee during the night? Maybe you have to do it more than once and that maddens you. And during the day, do you feel like you're bursting and really have to make it to the bathroom? But then when you get there, you only have to pee a little bit. Well, if that maddens you and you want to fix it, and it should, if it maddens you, then listen to this show. Welcome to the Dream Interpretation Podcast with Michael and Sandy. Hello, hello. Welcome, everybody. We have a free webinar all about channeling where you can come along, ask us any questions you want. That's July 24th at 10 a.m. And to get there, go to dream-analysis.com forward slash channel. Register. If you register, you'll get the recording if you can't make it live. But we do want you to make it live. Please make it live. Um, there's going to be lots of information I'm going to share about what we've discovered over the years uh, from teaching people to channel and channeling uh, ourselves. I've been channeling for 30 plus years. It's a very long time. I've seen a lot. I've hit a lot of problems. Um, and if you uh, have your questions, I hopefully can answer them uh, in at that event. And it's not just, hey, channeling is this blase, interesting kind of thing. It's like, no, here's the scary parts about channeling. These are the things you don't want to do. Really, the title of this uh, webinar is How to Channel Safely. And it's going to be 90 minutes. It'll probably go a bit over with the questions, but you will enjoy it. You will thoroughly enjoy it. But Sandy, do we want to start with some dreams? Yes, I love the title of this first dream. So I'm ready to dive in. It is titled On a Retreat in Ireland. And it's from Jane. I was on a retreat in Ireland. It was a stone cottage, but the rooms were all laid out in an unusual way. It was very confusing, like a maze. I got there and I was trying to set up my place so I'm in a good position in the room. I wanted to be in a comfortable chair and close to the front where I still have space to stand up if I wanted to. Everyone is milling around. It is my first time there, so I don't know where we are going to be. And I don't know where the teacher is going to be. My teacher is there. He is wearing a red sweatshirt. I have to mingle a little bit. Finally, he goes inside and I start setting up my space. My friend Natasha is beside me. And we have sat together before in previous retreats. People are gathering. There's a lot of little old ladies around and lots of people drinking tea. Natasha tells me she is going to go for a walk and uses the bathroom and stretches her legs before we start. We get up and we both leave our personal items on the chair to mark our place so people know it's taken. We go outside for a quick walk. We come back. Natasha doesn't go back to the chair right away. She goes to the bathroom. I come back to the chairs. Natasha's chair is gone and there's a little old lady in my chair. She is drinking tea. I'm thinking, how do I kick this lady out of my chair? I crash down beside her and I tell her that this is my chair and I've already saved my spot. She tells me that she's always sits here. I tell her, look, I traveled very far away. I arrived early to make sure I get this chair and I really want to sit in this seat. She says, I'll tell you what, dear. I will put up another chair for you. She is being a pain in the ass, and I don't want to give in. I sit down, and the teacher walks back in the room, and he is looking around and chatting. He says, another five or ten minutes, guys, and then we'll get started. Wow, Michael. Very interesting. There you go. All right, so there's more to this dream. <laughs> but it's an easy one to follow along. We, we, we can feel the pain of this dream or what's going on for her. So uh, the old lady, of course, the old lady is always going to be mom. So mom puts herself first, puts her needs first, and always has around me. Uh, my privacy is disregarded, and we know the privacy is disregarded because she says she puts her private things on the chair to hold the space, and that's disregarded. Um, and this this is a limitation for the dreamer. And that, <laughs> this is the dream that's all about, okay, uh, having to get up to go to the bathroom during the night. So it'll make sense. And we can see the connection. So we see mom creates this issue. Mom doesn't give me any privacy. Uh, and then we see the bathroom stuff coming up because Natasha leaves to go to the bathroom. Well, why does Natasha appear in the dream? I asked uh, Jane to tell me about her and she said, uh, she's in the flow. Nothing bothers her. If somebody took her seat, she'd be like, I'll oh, just sit over here. That's great. 
she's the antidote in the dream. Like, don't get bothered. But it's not just don't get bothered. It's don't get bothered by mom. <laughs> That's really the issue. Don't get bothered by, my, by mom. Um, so what else we have? The, the teacher comes in. He's wearing a red sweatshirt. So that's all about joy. That's fine. She's an energy worker. Red is the color for energy. Red's Sandy's favorite color, by the way. But um, and her, her second favorite color is also red. That's how good red is for her. But uh, the dreamer um, has to go to the bathroom a lot to pee. That's her issue. It's always connected to mom. And we've known this for a long time. When I help somebody cut the ties up by and they go through our programs, that's one of the issues that uh, frequently gets fixed. They report, hey, I can sleep through the night. That never used to be the case. And then that other issue of like you get up, you need to go to the bathroom. You really need to go, really need to go. And you go during the day and then you only pee a little bit. And you're like, I know my bladder can hold way more than that. Five or 10 times more than that. That's crazy. Why did I feel I need to go so much? There's a, there's a good reason for that. Um, so what else have we got? Uh, yeah, the, the little old lady's like, I'll pull you up a chair. And she doesn't say it in the dream, but she told me when discussing it, that she pulls up this tiny little useless chair. You're like, there, you can sit there. Um, and she says, so, so this is the way mom was. Mom, even though she's put you out, she would act like she's doing me a big favor um, by like, oh, I'll pull you up another chair. It's like, no, that isn't really how it is. You're the one putting me out still. And so this is a mom issue, big mom issue for her. Uh, mom not, give, not giving her the space that she needed. And this is important. Remember this. Uh, it even hits our next dream. Uh, but her paradigm view is set by mom. Uh, and her view now is if someone's seat in a venue is going to be stolen, it's going to be my seat. And so it does happen to her. You know, it's so if this isn't you at all, like you go to a venue, put your, your things uh, on a spot or else you'll just go, oh, wherever I end up sitting, I'll get to ch chat to somebody new. It'll all be good. It'll be fine. But if you've got this issue and you were never given space by mom, then you you go into a venue and you try to carve out and say, I, I got to make sure this problem that always happens to me doesn't happen at this event. So you carve out your spot. But the universe says, oh, if you want to steal a seat, steal it from this person because this person has a karmic issue here. And so this is what you need to do. And so it does happen. So uh, <laughs> anything else we want to say from that part? I, I think we've got a question. Have you questioned, Sandy? Um, well, I did, but we'll let it go no, until no, no, the no. end. Ask. Well, there's a lot of people mealing around. So what's going on with that? And then the, the teacher says five or 10 minutes and we'll get started. So she also says it's a maze at the start. So it's like it's a yes. puzzle. So it's like, I got to figure this out. This is not easy. Uh, how am I going to create the space I need? And all the people milling around are like, I got to protect myself from all these people milling around. They don't care. Those people are just like, they're here to have fun. They're all off chatting, but I'm trying to keep this space. And I also, I'm trying to keep a space so that my friend that I like is uh, going to be sitting beside me too, because that's going to enhance my experience. And so not only is her chair stolen, or Natasha's chair is stolen and her chair is taken. So it's like, it's a double whammy. And so it's really emphasizing, this is this is a problem we want to address. We want to show you the connection and we want to show you that this is connected to your bathroom issue, the need to have to go pee all the time. Um, we see tea is mentioned in the dream here. And she said, yo, I, I have this issue with black tea. She doesn't really, she has an issue with mom. Um, and if we look at the next part of the dream, maybe then we will tie it all together. Well, there's one more question. Of course, I want to know about Ireland. Why is the retreat in Ireland? The dreamer's from Ireland. So it doesn't mean oh. anything specific to her. If it was anybody okay. else and they were going to Ireland, then we would interpret Ireland. Okay. Okay. Yeah. The next part of the dream starts out really good. So I'm ready to dive in. I decided to go to the bathroom before we start. I get up, but I don't know where it is. I walk into the main hallway. There is a room off to the left and it's filled with men in lazy boy chairs and they are smoking and staring straight ahead, maybe at a football game. The air is very smoky. I don't go in. I keep going down the hall and I find another bathroom, but there is a line. Someone tells me that there's another one in the next room above the kitchen. I go into the next room. I see the kitchen and there is a tiny little st a set of stairs going up over to the right of the kitchen to the bathroom. The stairs are so narrow, I have to balance to make sure I don't fall into the kitchen. The bathroom is very old. It is 
Indian style hole in the ground for a toilet. Oh boy, Michael, this is a real winner. I go in and blow my nose. I use the toilet, but there is no toilet paper. And now I'm annoyed that I use the last bit of tissue to blow my nose. I finish, wash my hands. I make it back to the room. Now the teacher is on the same side of the room as my seat. I sit down and there is one seat between us. I looked down at the seat and up at him and asked him if anyone is sitting there. He says, no. So I move closer. He says, you want to be as close as possible, huh? I said, yes. I want to be close as possible and still be comfortable. He says, you really want it, don't you? I said, yes. Okay. That's it, Michael. <laughs> so the we know she has a physical issue because of the kitchen and the bathroom. We know she gives people space. This is her thing. She'll give other people space because she doesn't go into the room where all the men are watching a football game, even though that would probably be the easiest place to go and use a bathroom. And so she goes, puts herself out and goes through this awkward situation and she goes up this narrow, narrow stairs. So we know that there's a, a problem with the elimination system for her. Not necessarily bad or anything in any way, but we see the physical issue is pointed out because of the physical constraint uh, at this part of the dream. And then she gets, uh, she has a problem with using the bathroom. You know, she uses up the tissue paper. So her bathroom issue annoys her. That's that's really what this is saying. The irritation is there. Um and then she gets back into the room and it's like, okay, you know, all that other hassle could have been avoided because now the teacher's over here and you've got this seat you can sit in. And not only that, you can move into an, an empty seat that's closer to him. And so he's really positive. I asked her about this. I said, like, your guide is telling you, he's, he's going to be encouraging you to really, really want something. And uh, so he's going to be saying this in a positive way. Like, like you want to, you need to want this more than you want to breathe, you know? And she said, yeah, it was that kind of way. Very positive. Like, do you really want it? You, re you know, and so what is it trying to overcome? It's overcoming. Uh, she needs to want to be in this space or get the best place that she can more than she has this fear of uh, her privacy is going to be disregarded. Her space going to, is going to be disregarded. You know, that's where her focus is. Not on, oh my gosh, I'm going to get the best seat in the house. Her focus is on avoiding the worst seat in the house. And that's the switch. Um, and the focus on avoiding the worst seat is because of mom. Mom didn't give me my space. If I did try hold space in a place, mom would take it from me and claim it as hers and then act like she had been so put out by me, really, when it's the other way around, clearly. And so what is the connection with going to the toilet? Here it is. Um, mom is the one in her childhood who's like, hey, come on, Jane, do you need to go to the toilet? Let's go to the toilet. Now, this is a normal enough thing moms do. But this affects some people in a different way. We end up go saying, okay, I'll go to the toilet. And we force ourselves to pee and, and go and go and go. And every time mom says, do you need to go to the toilet? You go to the toilet. And this is what I channeled on this dream. And they said, this is true for an awful lot of people, which is why I had the opening sequence. So it's like, mom puts me out, but I'm in the middle of drawing. I'm in the middle of whatever I do. And mom says, come on, Jane, let's go pee. And you're like, okay, I'll go pee. Uh, partly because that's now become my nature. I'm going to accommodate other people. I won't put mom out by by saying no, making her have to do it again. So every time mom says, do you need to go pee? I go pee. So uh, I have this issue that I don't go when my body tells me to go. I go when my mom tells me to go. And I've trained myself to be that way at a very young age, at such a young age that I've forgotten that that's what I've done. And now mom's irritation and mom's loop in my mind is what makes me have to keep going, keep going, keep going. And what they said to do, although she obviously work on mom, she can work on mom, but they said the solution to this issue, even if you do nothing else, is when you get that feeling that you need to go, um, to break that constantly, constantly needing to pee feeling, say in your mind, when you get that feeling that you need to go, mom, I'm an adult, I can hold it, I will go later when I want to go. And then even if you go five minutes later, that's okay. But don't go there and then. You have to say this thing. If you're in the house on your own, you can say it out loud and it'll be fine. But if you're not on your own, just say it in your mind, mom, I'm an adult. I can I can hold it. I will go later when I want to go. And they're saying, then wait as long as you can. Like, don't hurt yourself by waiting. But you're breaking the connection of, oh, I've just been prodded and now I need to go. And they're saying very quickly, 
it, it will go to where you don't have to go and it's back to being under your body's control because you already know that your body can hold more than you currently do because you go to the toilet and you're like, wow, there was nothing there. I really didn't need to go. Why did it feel so urgent that I make it to the bathroom? The urgency comes from the, the other psychological issue. And all you're doing with this action is breaking that connection. So do you have other questions, Sandy? Yeah, I do that. First of all, that's a huge thing. I know um, from a lady's point of view that this can go on. And when I did cutting the ties, I used to have to pee constantly at night. And after the second time of cutting the ties with mom, I finally have nights where I make it through the night where I don't have to pee. I'll tell you, it's a pain in the butt. But the interesting thing is my mom has that issue too. <laughs> and the stories I've heard about her mom yeah, <laughs> there's some work that can be done. So even if you don't fully heal this issue, to to improve it to where you, like instead of going twice during the night, you go once during the night, like, it's all a win. And especially yep. during the day to get that control back, that like it's not your body. A lot of the time it's not your body at all. In this case, for this streamer, it's not our body. Um, but let's move on to the next stream because there is a connection. Well, I have one one small thing. What is the Indian style hole in the ground? Why that type of toilet? Well, this lady has traveled. She's lived in a lot of places. Um, but she it, it's the annoyance. It's like, oh, this is the most inconvenient thing to do it using the bathroom. It, it's all about that inconvenience uh, for oh, her. Gotcha. It's an inconvenience. All righty. So the next stream is also from Jane and is called, Are You Looking at Real Estate? Question mark. Uh, is there anything you want to talk about first before we dive in, Michael? Yeah, I thought it would be, let's do this a little bit differently. Normally you read the whole thing and then I say what they mean. But so there's a movie star in this dream and she represents the dreamer's channeling ability. So as Sandy reads the dream, see how the dreamer is treating her own channeling ability. Uh, she stays far away from him. And why would she do that? So now start asking your questions, questions in your mind about, okay, why is that going on? Now that I know that every time the, the movie star is mentioned, it is her ability to channel. Mm, very good. Okay. Here's the dream. I'm being interviewed for a radio show. They are prepping me beforehand. They tell me that I need to say something about my work, and then we will dive into the story. And then you can give some facts, and then we can get, come back to what it, it is that you really want to talk about. I like all the and thens. <laughs> we have been filming off and on all day. There was a movie star there and she was blonde. I didn't know who it was, but everyone else did. We were all staying in the same house. I wasn't really hanging out with her. We were all filming something and she was doing the least amount of work. So she was hanging around the house the most. She seemed to be a big deal. Everyone was making a fuss about her, but I wasn't interacting with her too much. I wanted to give her space. She was using the iPad a lot. I had my phone, so I was usually using that. I had a sign into a Zoom. I had signed into a Zoom meeting and I couldn't do it on my phone. I needed the ad iPad to do my meeting. We were in the car. I was in the back seat and I was trying to sign into the meeting. The road was really bumpy. So my fingers uh, were hitting all the wrong buttons and I kept opening folders and windows I didn't mean to open. <laughs> Boy, I've done that. She had some of her accounts open and some photo folders open and I kept opening them by accident. I was chatting with a friend on WhatsApp the same time and told them what I was seeing. They were telling me to take her stuff and sell it as she was so famous. I thought about it for a second, but I didn't want to do that as I thought it was wrong and I didn't like the consequences. I didn't take anything. I finished the meeting and she was in the car and she had the iPad. She asked if I was on the iPad and I said yes. She says, gosh, you managed to open just about everything. You opened Remax. I replied, yes, it popped up 
with an air balloon and I hit it by accident as the road was bumpy. She said, oh, are you sure you're not looking for real estate? Question mark. Okay, I love Sandy how when somebody asks a question, you always add the question mark. <laughs> anyway, um, so she was having difficulty opening uh, or signing into the Zoom thing, which is a connection, making her connection and channeling. We know that the um, the movie star is all about channeling, but see what she's done, doing. She's given her space. Now, this is the dreamer's issue. Look at the connection to the last dream. Um, so she's not connecting with her channeling ability the way she needs to. And she's being extremely respectful by giving the movie star the space that she uh, thinks that she wants and all this sort of stuff. Uh, but her way of showing respect is to give space. And she's been told, stop doing that. And this comes from you never being given space. Uh, so for you, the most respect you can ever show anybody is to is to give space. So look at the last dream. The She's trying to hold her space because mom never gave her space. So because of that, the best thing I can ever do for you is give you so much space that you wouldn't even know I'm in the room. And, and that's crazy. So you see the connection between both dreams. Mom not giving space and I hated that. So the way you will notice me is that I will give you so much space that you won't even know I'm in the room. So you're never going to notice me. Like it's a contradiction. It's not going to work. There's a problem with that. So you got to fix that for two reasons. It's connected to the going to the toilet issue. And it's also connected to you, um, uh, almost everything in your life, uh, you know, it's, it's crazy if you think about it, that it's understandable. This is my way of showing respect, but your way of showing respect is con totally controlled and conditioned by your childhood. And it's not really respect. It's a, it's just going the opposite way of the way mom was. So you've got to engage your channeling ability. Like we see the friend says, sell the photos online. And that seems negative, right? But it's her channeling. She's the blonde actress. You're everything in the dream. So it's saying, look, you can make money from your connection with this channeling ability. And she said, I don't want to do that. So she's given this aspect of herself so much space out of respect that she's not going to make money out of it. Um, and it's, it's a, a crazy, it's so obvious it's hard for me to describe it. Am I making sense of this, Sandy? You're making sense of it. It's very interesting because I see how people would do that. They think that this is what someone wants instead of really asking them what they want. And in reality, this woman, this movie star, she's not asking for space. No, she's not. And what's really nice is when she finally has the conversation with her, it's a really casual, easy conversation. There's nothing difficult about it. And then, of course, the real estate. Why real estate? So moving house in a dream is a very good thing. It's like, this is where I stand on this position, like my, my normal home. But if I buy a new home in a dream, it's like I've moved. I'm no longer stuck where I used to be. I've learned something new and I've moved position on this particular subject area. So moving home in a dream is really good. So looking at real estate is really good. And especially when a guide says, oh, are you sure you're not looking for real estate? Uh, it's like, you're sure you want to don't want to change your position. And of course, the position here is to not be apologetic. Like she's saying, like, oh, I did that. Uh, the other thing that's interesting, Remax, for the people that don't know, uh, their symbol is a hot air balloon and their slogan is rise above everybody else. So the dream is saying, make the connection with your channeling ability and you're going to rise above everybody else. She does energy work and ultimately it's saying connect and include channeling in your energy work. Let's do the next piece and see if we can wrap it up. Yeah. So the next piece, we have been filming all day and it was taking ages as people kept walking in front of the camera. I went across the street to get something from the store and the sound guy was walking in front of me. There was a little girl being interviewed for her school and she was sitting on a chair outside the store. The interviewer was sitting across from her and then they had another chair with the phone set up to film them. Our sound guy, who was covered with tattoos, walked right through their shot. They had set themselves up with a nice, serene background, and he walked right through it. He realized what he did, and he doubled back and then realized he did it again. And he went around them and apologized. I was approaching. I was thinking that I couldn't believe that he did that, considering that's what we had been dealing with all morning. And for some reason, 
I needed one of the chairs. I don't know why, but I was standing around trying to find a good time to ask them if I could take one. It would make what we were doing much easier if we had a chair. It would make things more balanced in our shot. I think the little girl was getting uncomfortable because I was standing there. I was trying to make it look like I wasn't standing there waiting. All of the retakes were making her exhausted. <laughs> Funny, Michael. <laughs> All right. So I'm looking at the time. We'll wrap it up quickly. So add channeling to her, your energy work. She does this thing where she uh, does energy work on people for an hour while music is playing. And then they come back from that and they're just they've been to an amazing, amazing place. But she's got to add the channeling work. Uh, but here's the issue we see in this dream. So we see the guide, the sound guy, he's a guide. And he walks in front of the shot twice. So he's showing her the issue. That's why he does it twice. So she either stays 40 feet away from something or she walks across the shot. That's her problem. Uh, but in both cases, they're both the same. She's giving her energy away be and she's giving it away because of the issues with mom. So deal with the issues with mom. That'll stop all of that. And I asked her what age is the girl. She said she's seven to eight years old. So this is really an issue from that age in her life, seven to eight years old. Adults didn't give me space as a kid and I channeled on that. So it's like, that's the specific thing. And she didn't feel as a child that adults gave her space. And so now as an adult, she feels adults don't give her space. That's not going to go away on its own. You have to hit this on the head. So what she's going to do now from uh, doing both of these dreams is she's going to add channeling to her energy work after her group session uh, she's going to channel answers to people's questions, but the answers will be relevant to the person's experience they just had. And she's going to keep maintain the focus and all that sort of stuff. Um, so that's really good as, a, as an action to take away from uh, this dream. So she's an action on the other dream, uh, which is this is going to fix my issue with having to go to the bathroom all the time. And this one is about how I'm going to include channeling in the space that I already have which is beautiful. I love the power of dreams. You look at a dream and it's like, clearly, here's the issue, here's the solution, here's the issue, here's the solution. And if you can channel on top of it, it's like, here is a glorious solution to this particular problem. Um, I'm going to say this and hopefully we, we can fit it in. We're not, we're still on the air. We see the issue with her standing beside the girl. So we know that the irritation today is connected to childhood. We see the girl as childhood. Uh, the girl represents her childhood and she's the one irritated and exhausted. So it exhausts her because of the issues from childhood um, when she like either gives space or has to stay there to hold her space. There's no winning uh, for her. Sandy. Wow, that's brilliant. Well, I have a lot more questions, but I believe we're out of time. So thank you, everybody. I hope you have a good week. And remember, we've got a channeling webinar coming up on July 24th at 10 a.m. Did I get it right? You did dream-analysis.com forward slash channel hope to see you there take care everybody bye bye